Hello friends, welcome to Offer Studies YouTube channel. This is part 20 in PySpark playlist. This is like a continuation to my previous videos. In my 18th video, I discussed about column class which will help you to point out or represent a column in a data frame. And in my last video, I discussed about when and otherwise functions that you can apply on top of that column. Similarly, these functions also we can apply on top of the column in a data frame and it will help you in real time to achieve many scenarios actually. So I picked a few functions here, not only that, there are so many other functions are available on top of the columns you can perform actually. So please watch all my videos in the sequence order in a playlist so that you will get most out of it. All the videos are in a sequence order. Let's jump into this video in which I am going to discuss about alias, ascending, descending and also cached and like functions. So let's explain me one by one with some example. So let's discuss about this alias function. This alias function provides a column with another name. So let me practically explain you that what I mean. So let's go back to browser. I have already opened my Databricks workspace. Let me go to workspace, users, my name and here let's try to create a new notebook and uh, this notebook may be called functions functions notebook okay so this is the name i will give python is a default language this is my cluster name let me hit create button to create this cluster uh, to create this notebook so let me close this tooltip and here let's try to create a data frame a dummy data frame so i am creating a variable called data and here I will be using like a ID, ID column, ID value is 1, Mahir, then maybe uh, salary column, so salary is 2000. So this is the first row, let's assume, okay. Let me copy this and second row is maybe 2, Wafa, salary is 4000, okay. And let's have a third row here, ID 3, uh, maybe RC, salary is 3000, okay. So this list represent rows in a data frame. You already know that if you have seen my previous videos. And let's try to create another variable called schema. Here I will be having a list which represents the column names. So id column, then name column, then we have a salary column. Okay. And then let's use this spark keyword that will give spark session object. On top of that we have create data frame function to which I am passing my data variable and schema variable. This entire code will create a data frame. So let me store that data frame in a df variable. And then on top of df, we can use this show function to show the data of the data frame in a tabular format. So let's wait for command to run here. Once command execution completed, we can see our data frame here. ID column, name column, salary column, and we can see our data also. So now, if I go back to presentation, I said, let's discuss about alias function. So for some reason, let's assume I want to get these column names differently. Maybe employee ID here, employee name here and employee salary here. So how to do that? In that case, you can use a alias function. Let me practically show you that. Let me remove this here. So we created a data frame till here and then on top of data frame, let's use select function to select the columns. So I want to select the id column then on a data frame name column then on a data frame salary column so let's use the show function here now let me execute this code and see see we are able to select all the three columns but column names are same but i want this column name as a employee id this is employee name this is employee salary so to do that on top of every column so from here to here it represents one column and this represents another column and this represents another column right you know that from my previous videos so on top of every column put a dot and hit control space alias or you can directly start typing alias so this function will give you a alias name so i don't want column name as id i want is as employee underscore id so similarly on top of name column to the alias function i am supplying column name as maybe emp underscore name and then for the salary column also let's try to use a alias function and to the alias function 
I am passing column name as EMP underscore salary. So function is there to represent the data. So now let me hit shift enter and see what will happen. See now we were able to give alias names for our columns, right? So this is how alias function will be used to provide alias names for the columns. So let's discuss about the second example. Here I am discussing about ascending and descending. So as name implies, it will actually help you to sort the columns in ascending or descending order. If you see here, the data frame gets created with this data here. And here we are sorting with the help of name column in descending order. So let me practically show you this as well. So now here, let me remove all this code here. So till here, our data frame created. Now I want to sort my data frame. So sort function. To the sort function, maybe I want to sort based on name column, but I want to sort this name column in a ascending order. So as I said, ASC. So this function will help you to sort the columns in a ascending order. And then finally, let's try to show the data frame here. And let's hit shift enter and see whether our data shows in a ascending order or not. You can see now data came in a ascending order, right? First A, then M, then W. Now, if I want to sort same name column, maybe descending order, then use a descending function. So hit shift enter once again. You will be seeing data formatted in a descending order. So this ascending and descending functions will help you to order the columns data in a data frame. So another function is cached function. This is also a very useful function. It helps you to convert the data type of any column. So for example, here, we are converting a data type of a salary column to integer using this cached function. Let me practically show you this. So let's go back to our Databricks workspace. And here on top of this data frame, let's try to use the print schema function and see the schema here. Now you can see we have ID column, name column, salary column. ID column data type is long. Name column data type is string. Salary column data type is long. So from where these data types are coming, when you create a data frame using this function, if you don't explicitly specify the structure types for your schema along with the data types, then based on the data what you pass, it will infer the schema automatically. This we have already discussed in our previous videos. So watch them all my previous videos and especially structure type videos to get a more idea. So now let's assume my data frame has these data types. I want to convert data type of salary to integer. So how to do that? So what I can do here is on top of data frame, let's select all the columns first. So ID column, then name column, then salary column. So I selected all the columns and this entire thing, let's try to keep it in a new data frame called DF1. So why? Because this code will generate a data frame and that data frame we are storing in a DF1. So now DF1.show function or df1.print schema function. Let's use the print schema function. So let me hit shift enter. I will still see the same data types. So here on top of salary column, I want to convert the data type to integer, right? So on top of that salary column, let's try to use a cast function. To the cast function, I am specifying convert this data type to integer. Now if I do the print schema of the df1, I will be seeing integer here. So let me hit shift enter to execute this entire command. Now I can see integer as a column data type for a salary here. So how that magic is happening? This salary column, we pointed it and used cached function there to convert the data type. Okay. So let's go back to presentation. So the last function which I want to discuss is like function. So it is similar to SQL like function. For example, you can, uh, you want to filter data from a data frame rows where name starts with M. So that's the case where I used like M percentage, right? In this percentage indicates anything. So this is like a wildcards, right? I don't go in detail about it. If you know SQL, you know this already. So if you don't know, simply search in Google like wildcard entries for like operator in SQL. You will see how to pass these wildcards. So let me explain you what I mean by that. So here I created a data frame, right? So let's try to display the data frame using a show function here. And uh, if you see, we have a ID, name, salary, columns. I have like Mahir, Wafa, CR, name. So I want to take out all the rows where uh, name starts with M. So let me do one thing here. 
so let me copy this entire thing and let's add another row here fourth row and in the fourth row id4 name is maybe mahesh okay and salary is something so now let me execute this i will be seeing a four rows here and two two names are two rows contains name values which starts with m so i want to filter this data frame where name is like m that means it starts with m and something so how to do that so to do that on top of data frame let's try to use a filter transformation first because i am filtering the data and here let's try to select my column so on top of name column i want to apply this like function to filter the columns which starts with m after m it can be anything so to this to to donate anything or to indicate anything we should use this percentage symbol and finally let's try to use a show function on top of it to show the data let me hit shift enter now i will be seeing only two rows where name starts with m so using this like operator i will be able to achieve that right so i hope you make sense of it not only this maybe where name starts with w if i do that only wafa will come why because only that row contains a name starting letter w if i use a and shift enter then again the same thing okay so like this you can use the like operator similar to sql like expression to filter the data according to the patterns i hope you got it thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification whenever i add videos thank you so much